Hello, welcome to the 12 Hacks of Christmas. This week we're gonna look at Swede. Now Swede's a much overlooked root vegetable. It's not particularly glamorous, but we see it as an important key part of the English winter larder here on the farm, and we grow it and crop it all through the winter. Essentially, a Swede is just a store of energy for the plant. They get planted in the summer, and the idea is that as the autumn and the winter approach and the temperature drops, the plant kind of goes into hibernation and it pushes its energy into storing energy in the starchy, sugary root. And the idea for the plant is that in the spring and the summer, the temperature goes up and the plant will bolt and it will move into flower and it will carry on its cycle. And we're effectively picking it in the middle of the winter, in the middle of its hibernation, and we want to take that stored energy, and that's the part of the plant that we want. From an eating point of view, sweet is kind of on the spectrum of most winter root vegetables, in that the dishes tend to be sturdy and comforting, and dare I say it, a little bit stodgy. You're never gonna be able to highly refine a swede. When you mash it, there's an inevitability to it being lumpy. I mean, you could try passing it through sieves and trying to get a perfect puree, but I don't think that's what a swede is about. Its water content is higher than something like a potato. With a potato, you can get a crispy edge and you can fry it in a pan and you can get some color on it. It's much more difficult to do with that with a swede because it's slightly wetter when cooked. And what we're gonna do with this dish is we're gonna use that slight wetness to our advantage and we're going to use it as the medium in which to cook it. We're going to start this recipe where many recipes start. We're going to start with some onions. Now we've looked at onions before in the veg hacks and it's the same principle that you can take something that's raw and sulfurous and quite pungent and if you apply slow heat and time to it then they will break down into something very sweet and very soft. Now it's about three big onions and that looks like a lot of onions but actually when you put them in the pan and you give them some time they're going to collapse down into a fairly, fairly smaller amount. So we're going to slice these onions and we're going to throw them into a pan and we're going to add a fairly heroic amount of butter. So about 50 grams or so of butter. Now we're going to cook it out gently. So we're going to make sure that butter doesn't burn in the pan. I want the fat in there so that it helps the, the sweet cook. If you don't want to use butter, you can use oil instead. While they're cooking, we're going to use the time to slice our sweet. Now we cut our sweets fairly long with the tops on as well. So the first thing you want to do is take the top and the bottom off just to give you some flat surface to steady them so it doesn't roll about and risk you cutting yourself. Now you can use a standard peeler to peel the swedes. It's easy enough in most cases, but sometimes there's some nooks and crannies and divots and gnarled ends on the swede that make it difficult to move through a peeler around. So what I find myself quite often doing is just sitting the swede on the board and taking my knife, using it around the curve of the swede and just taking that skin off by going from the top to the bottom. If you've got a nice sharp knife and you're confident, you can follow that curve with very little waste, probably less than a peeler maybe. You keep turning the swede and following it on the curve like that. So this is how I tend to peel my swede. We're gonna slice this swede as thinly as we can. We've got plenty of time while those onions cook down so there's no rush. Cut it into a manageable pieces. So if you tried to slice this whole piece really thinly, it'd be just be rocking around. We're gonna cut it into quarters. Now we can deal with each of these quarters in turn. So put it on a nice flat side and then take the time to slice it as thinly as you can. This is gonna give you really good layering inside the gratin. Once the swede's finely sliced, throw it into a large mixing bowl. And then when your onions are ready, tip those in too. You're gonna to wanna to season with some salt. And then I add some white pepper and a little grating of nutmeg, because I know both those flavors go incredibly well with swede. Then what you wanna do is you wanna mix it well and make sure that it's all mixed together. And you could use a spoon, you could use a spatula, but I find that the best way to make sure that all that butter and all those onions get mixed really evenly with the swede is to get your hands in there and give it a good mix around. Now you want to pack it into a roasting tray. I'm using a cast iron pan here. It's effectively just a roasting tray with a handle, but anything that's going to fit it nice and snugly. And you want to push it down and pack it nice and densely. So get there and work it with your hands and press it down into the corner so it's nice and pressed down. And we're going to slide it into an oven at about 190 degrees C. But before we do that, we want to cover it and we want to stop the top being exposed to the direct heat of the oven. We don't want the top to burn or to color before the rest of it's cooked. So if you've got a lid for your roasting tray or your pan, that's great. If not, you can make something called a cartouche. It's basically just baking parchment that sits on the top and it stops the top being exposed to that dry heat of the oven. Now, if your baking parchment's uh, a bit too stiff or won't sit down flat on the pan, you can run it under a tap and give it a scrunch to make it more malleable. And then place it on top of your swede, press it down into the edges and it's ready to go in the oven. 
Right, this sweet's in the oven for about 25 minutes and it's cooked through and you can see that the moisture's come out of the sweet and that along with the butter has been the medium that it's cooked in. If you can press a, a knife tip into it and it passes through easily, you know it's done. Now I could put this back in the oven for another five or 10 minutes and try and get a little bit of color on the top of it. But actually what I've done, I've taken some sourdough breadcrumbs and I've blended them up with some fresh rosemary and a little bit of oil and salt. And I'm gonna spread those on the top and that's gonna give me a nice crispy crunch, almost like a crumble topping on it. That'll go back in the oven for about 10 to 15 minutes until it's nice and golden and that'll be our dish finished. Okay, that's come out of the oven. As you can see, it's nice and golden on top and that's ready to serve. I hope you enjoyed this idea for Swede and I hope you give it a place on your Christmas table this year. Thank you for watching our Christmas hacks. Please like, follow and add any comments below. Merry Christmas.